And welcome back to the long run where we're playing Final Fantasy XIV, I mean the longest journey. Uh, Jewel being right as always apparently. Uh, so last time... Did you deliver the map to the captain of the White Dragon? No, not yet. I'm not paying you to prance about the marketplace like royalty, girl. Get moving or you'll get the boot. Yes, sir. I was hoping for for a good loud maps. But unfortunately, we're getting yelled at for not doing our job. Also, I should probably turn exits on. That'd be a good idea. So I'm not searching for every exit in the Mall of America here. No maps until you deliver the maps! Anyway, I'm pretty sure this is the guy we have to talk to. Um, oh, uh, no? I guess we have to talk to the other guy. Go take a long walk out on a small pier. Is this map for you? No? One map of the Sea of Sanders? To Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon. Map of Ch uh, Chen Gabriel to the, the Wasteland to the Rolling Man. Map of the Northlands to be delivered to Tun Luyek at the Journeyman Inn. One map of the Sea of Songs to Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon. Interesting spelling. Yeah, it makes it a little hard to read. Okay, who's... Alas, Horatio, I knew him well. Except I have no idea. Are you Horatio? How are you today, then? Like you care. Is this the White Dragon? That's what the big white letters on the prow spell out. What do you think? I'm looking for the captain. Is he around? What would you with the captain of the White Dragon? I have a delivery for him, a map from the map merchant at the Temple Market. Aye. I be Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, fastest vessel there ever was. Hand the map over, girl. With Jarl's blessing, the wind will return soon, and I can leave this accursed harbor for sunnier shores. Now I can give you the map. Thank you. There's an errand for your trouble. Thank you. I think I have to get this signed as well, huh? Sign this, please. What is it? I need your signature to confirm that you've received the map. Map? What map? The one I just gave you. Oh, that one. Sorry, I never put my signature on a piece of paper. Sign it or I'll kill you. Why not? Brings bad luck to give a piece of yourself in that manner. A signature has untold powers. It's part of your soul. I can't sign away my soul. Who told you that signing a slip of paper is bad for your soul? I'm from Guyenne. And we're a spiritual people. Our souls are in balance with our bodies, and the great Mojal has taught us not to endanger this balance. Signing my name, giving a piece of myself in that manner, breeds corruption and imbalance within. And it pisses the Mojal off no end. And that's why you choose to make my life difficult? Hey, blame organized religion. I mean, I would be happy to do so. You can't write, can you? Pardon? 
That's what this is all about. You can't write. Uh, so what? So what if I can't write? So what if I was born at sea and never spent more than a month ashore ever since? I still won't sign your accursed paper by Jal. Look, all you have to do is sign an X next to your name on the list. You can't trick the great Mojal. The Mojal's untrickable. That's not trickery. It's legally binding. I said no. Is there anything I can do to get you to sign? No. Well, yes. But no. Look, Captain, I'm desperate here. I really, really need some kind of signature. Well, there's always music. What's music got to do with you signing my list? Nothing, but it distracts the mojo. What are you talking about? Why would you need to distract the... the... mojo? I can't sign when there's a chance the mojo is watching. Music distracts the mojo. Ergo, I can sign. But doesn't that mean the mojo is always distracted? I mean, there's always music somewhere in the world. The mojo has an eye and an ear for every acolyte. And straying from the path can bring great wrath upon us. Granted, I know very little of the mojo. But seriously, maybe you should look into alternative religions? Blasphemy! Besides, I only have to visit the temple once every two years, and the membership fees are quite reasonable. So, if I play some music, you'll sign? Aye. I'll give you that much. I'll be back. I don't doubt it for a second. I mean, I do have something that will play music. No, I can't put this here. Maybe if I give it to you. No. Okay, I guess I do have to go to the music vendor for this. Running, running, running. I gotta go. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't have access to the uh, third threatening option. What's your, um, most affordable instrument? That's cute. The flute, right? And how much for the flute? I'm guessing that's one Aaron. Okay, that's a uh, good talk, I guess. Well, we just got one Aaron. I'll have the flute. That's one Aaron, isn't it? As luck would have it, I actually know how to play a flute. Not very well, but I'm sure the, uh, Mojal won't mind. Good talk. Also hydration achieved. Um... Uh, gonna pay one to get a signature to get paid one. With the self care. <sighs> you take 
take a, a nap for a second here. Anyway. It's on your chair that screams in agony. Listen, I don't have good luck with chairs. I think we all know that by now. I he's that's selling, not the he's way selling that a variety of friends. Um ship. Yeah, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, and stretch your chair. Anyway, here's a flute. Oh, uh, this mouth, the flute. Good talk. Hello. Uh huh. Bye. <laughs> I'm ready to play some music if you're ready to sign. Aye, go on, but don't stop until I'm done signing, or the Mojo will surely wreak vengeance on us both. Done. Here you go. And don't ever ask me to sign anything ever again. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Well, we got a stupid signature. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Oh man, look at this lovely it's signature. It's Captain Nebeve's, uh, signature. I can't believe I went through all that just to get a simple X. I know, right? And now we have a flute, so... Obviously, that means we can fast travel between areas, right? That's how it works. Toot toot, got the flute. <laughs> Do we have the Master Sword yet? Not yet. All right, map boy. <laughs> Since you are inverted. Right, your next assignment is a map of Shangagriel to the Rolling Man. Hold on, did you not ask me about him earlier today? Um, no, no, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I could have sworn. Well, no matter. Uh, do you know how to get to the rolling man's house? Can you tell I me how to get? Uh, let me explain then. The now, pay house. attention because this is complicated. He has chosen to live in the most inaccessible place in the city, but I guess he has his reasons. First, you head west off the marketplace on Oak until you get to a tiny little apothecary, Mrs. Cassop's Herbs and Oils, where you turn north on South Street, confusing that, for about four minutes of brisk walking. That's when you see a, a large grove of trees. It's a memorial to those who died in the last war with the tyrant back uh, the balance knows when. Can't see why they choose to remind us of that, where you'll turn left. That's west? No, left. That'll take you back south, but onto North Street instead. And that keeps you out of the Dalmari neighborhood. Down that way, nasty, nasty neighborhoods. Keep walking south or about, or was that north? Wait, wait, north on South Street, south on North Street, or the other way around. Anyway, find the Rose Bridge off uh, Irene Avenue and cross it. There's a river? 
No, just a bridge. The river disappeared 500 years ago. No one knows what happened to it. After you've crossed the bridge, you'll be on the western slopes of Marcuria. And that's where West House... I, I mean, the Rolling Man lives. No, far from it, but you need to pass through that part of Marcuria to get to the Rolling Man. Keep south and watch out for the livestock. They're likely to attack in that part of town. Oh, boy. Eventually, you'll get to a large circular square. That's where they used to hold executions back when the city was civilized. You call murder civilized? Better than locking people up for years, as any level-headed person would tell you. Our freedom cannot be curtailed. Real men choose the honor of death to the shame of incarceration. Yeah, sure you do. Circle around the square and head down Tendak for half a mile. Or should that be Parrick Lane? Yes, Parrick Lane. Head west on Parrick Lane for uh, half a mile. Then turn right at the Maiden's Honor Tavern. North again? Uh, no, west. Uh, Parrick Lane has a few twists and turns. Anyway, you should now be able to see the Ivory Tower. Is it a big tower? No, only about five feet tall, but it's ivory, straight from the coast of the Southlands, bravely cut from the drooling jaws of the gruesome Kandar. Big creature, four legs, large ears, long snout, sort of grayish in color? Yes, the horror of the Southlands. Many a brave hunter has fallen victim to its ravaging hunger. Good grief. Okay, then what? Pass by the tower to the edge of the cliff and look down. The rolling man has built his home on the cliffside. It's a wonder he's not been washed away by the storms. <laughs> I hope I got all that. Basically, go west until I hit the edge, right? Uh, yes, that would be correct. Well, <laughs> someone figured it out. All right, south on North Street, north on South Street, or was it the other way around? Uh, something about Parrick Lane. Go west till I hit the edge. Here, here he is. This is the guy, right? That's probably Mr. Westhouse. Hello, Mr. Westhouse? Damn, Mason, what is it now? Oh, oh. <clears throat> Guess you're not, uh, you're not calling on behalf of that son of a bitch Sanya for him. Sorry, I don't know who. No, no, that's very unlikely. From what I hear, he doesn't much enjoy the company of women. Well, who in damnation are you? April Ryan, sir. Ryan? <laughs> doesn't sound very Northlandian. Are you by any chance from the coast of. Yeah, hold on. Ryan? April Ryan? <laughs> I'll be damned. You're from Stark. Apparently. Until today, I thought I was just from Earth. I had no idea there were two of them. <laughs> Takes you by surprise, doesn't it? Well, goddamn. Sit down, Miss Ryan. Let me get you a drink. The liquor over here stinks to high heaven. Magic pollutes the purity of the spirit, but I keep a bottle of Glenfiddich for special occasions. Thanks for the offer, sir, but I didn't come here to have a drink. Really? I see. This isn't a social call. No, sorry. Oh, no matter. It's still a pleasant surprise to meet someone from home. <laughs> now... <clears throat> What may I do for you? Well, first of all, let's, uh, let's get business out of the way. I have a delivery for you. A delivery? When did the U.S. Postal Service start delivering mail to Arcadia? 
It's from the map merchant at the market. It's just a map. Oh, good. I've been waiting for you. Hmm? Hold your horses. What are you doing working for the guild? Are you planning on staying in Mercuria? I'd strongly advise against it, Miss Ryan. Arcadia may look like a pastoral fairy tale realm, but it's not. You bleed as easily here as you do in Stark, and magic can do more damage than a gun. I'm not planning on staying, but I had to find you. The map merchant was the only one who knew where you lived, and he wouldn't tell me. So I got him to hire me, and you were the second delivery on my list. Dear gods. Carrick and his misguided loyalty. I'll have a word with the man. Thanks for the map, though. I collect them. There's not much else to do in this godforsaken city. Also, by the way... Cortez told me to look you up. He did, did he? I see. <clears throat> Who's Cortez? You don't know him? I think not. I'd certainly remember. Did, did you say Cortez? Y you wouldn't be talking about old Manny Chavez, would you? Well, he ought to be dead by now, but then, by all rights, uh, <laughs> so should I. <laughs> I don't know his first name, but he calls himself Cortez. Tall fellow, mysterious and elusive, rarely answers a question with a simple yes or no. Smokes like a chimney? Aside from that bit about smoking like a chimney, it sounds exactly like Cortez. Manny. I'll be damned. That old crook is still around. Well, how the devil is he? He's good. Where do you know him from? Oh, my old life back in Stark. We had some exciting adventures, him and I. Actually, he's part of the reason I ended up here. I last saw him in the winter of 1934. But that's almost 300 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And I'm sure he doesn't look a day older than he did back then. The handsome devil. <laughs> Well, if I'm going to accept magic in parallel worlds, I might as well accept people living 300 years. Oh, no, you misunderstand. <clears throat> I'm only 46. I arrived here about 15 years ago, but I, I left Stark in 1934. Between the worlds where you dream, time has little meaning. I was trapped, you see, for, for quite a while. A while? 300 years? Time went by pretty fast. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but now that you mentioned 300 years, quite disconcerting, really. Quite disconcerting. So I looked it up. Um, the voice for, uh, for West House here is a man named uh, Ralph Byers. And if you if you have played Red Dead Redemption 2, you'll recognize his voice as Oswald Dunbar. Cortez said to look you up when I wanted to go back home to Stark. Now why would he say that? I'm not a shifter and I, I don't know any magic. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but you'd be better off asking the Sentinel priests for assistance. Already did. They said I was on my own, that they couldn't help me. Bloody typical. Those reactionary fools wouldn't extend a hand to help a drowning man if it violated the principles of their bloody balance. But I can't think why Manny would tell you to visit me in order to shift home. It just doesn't make sense. How did you end up here in Mercuria? <laughs> That's quite a story. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice it to say, I was always somewhat of an adventurer. The promise of virgin territory untouched by civilization held great sway with me in my youth, as did the idea of a highly spiritual state of mind. The occult, magic, karma. I was born in 1902 in Boston. By the time I was 17, I'd put that life behind me. I spent the next three years at sea, and then I wandered around Europe for a time. 
In the early 30s, the 1930s, of course, I found myself in India working as a journalist. That's where I met Manny, and that's where I first heard of Arcadia. I was amazed and quite skeptical at first, but the thought of a whole new world to see and magic? <laughs> I was a fool, of course, but who knew where my curiosity would bring me? So what happened in India? I've tried to forget about it, to be honest. If I could go back and convince myself not to... Oh, but I still wouldn't have listened, of course. The unknown attracts. I ended up in Tibet in the winter of 34, wading through snow up to my chest, thinking for sure that this was it. I was going to die. Manny pulled me out of that one, thank God. I spent three months in a monastery before... pushing on into the void. There's only one way for a non-shifter to pass through the divide, and it's not an easy road to take. Now, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'd prefer not to talk about the past anymore. There's more than enough to worry about in the present. I should get going. Very well. You're welcome back at any time, Miss Ryan. Any time. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. We are a signature, by the way. Yeah, we should probably do that. Sign this, please. It's just to confirm that I made the delivery. Certainly. Let's not forget to do that. Um, just for fun, I also looked up the um, the voice for April Ryan. Uh, she really hasn't done much as far as acting. Um, let's see. So her name is Sarah Hamilton. Um, three of her roles are as April Ryan in this game, uh, Dreamfall and Dreamfall Chapters. Uh, she was also dancer number one in Tricks. Which is a 1997 R-rated film. And uh, This is the Police 2. She came out about five years ago. She's a voice named Lily Reed. No, tricks. Like the kind that someone would turn. That, that wasn't a sarcastic statement. I actually meant that. Hold on one right? second, Miss Ryan. I just remembered okay. something. It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but Manny did give me something that might be of interest. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's probably not worth much. You're welcome to it if it's any help. Thanks. Ah, yes, I see. Hang on. That's fine. Cor Cortez said oh. something about Mr. Westhouse being the key to shifting back. Maybe... maybe there's something magical about the watch he gave me. Oh, so you're making me look at it right now. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off. And there's only a tiny hole left. Oh. 
A tiny hole, you say? If I insert this pin carefully into the hole, like so, and then slowly wind it... It worked! It's ticking! Well, that's neat. I did it! It's a shift! I can go home! By God, it's a shift. I haven't seen one for ages. Why don't you come back with me, Mr. Westhouse? You could say hello to your old friend, Manny. If I tried to step through that, Miss Ryan, I would suffer a most unpleasant experience. And I would be lost in the between forever. Besides, I built this house with my own two hands. I wouldn't want to leave it to these barbarians. And what does your Stark have to offer me? This world is more recognizable to me now. Now you go ahead, Miss Ray, and go back. And don't let your curiosity of the unknown tempt you into making another shift. Thanks for your help. Say hello to Manny for me. Tell him... Tell him I'm doing all right. And then I said... Thanks. Oh, there we go. You've just been standing here this entire time? Cortez. Oh, God, it's real. It's all true. I saw it. I saw the other world. Arcadia. Either I'm going crazy, or you were right about everything. Let's hope for the latter, eh, mi amiga? So I gather your trip was a success. Success? My whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, so I don't think success is the right word. Nothing about it makes sense. Fact is, I don't believe in magic. The sun does not need you to believe in it to rise in the morning, senorita. You have seen the truth with your own two eyes. I can do nothing more to convince you. It is up to you now. Well? Do I have a choice? I have to believe at least some of it. My life wouldn't make much sense otherwise. You are a true skeptic, April. Está bien. We need your kind to balance the hopeless romantics like myself. Bitch, you just did magic. You'd best start believing in magic, Miss Ryan. You're in one. And it doesn't quite work as well. Um. Who are you really, Cortez? Excuse me? People knew you over there in Arcadia. Tobias. He didn't know you by your real name, but he did know you. And Mr. Westhouse, he knew you too, as Chavez, but several hundred years ago. So my secrets are being revealed, are they? I wouldn't say that, because you're still a mystery to me. More so. Good. You see, senorita, mystery is important. To know everything, to know the whole truth is dull. There is no magic in that. Magic is not knowing. Magic is, is wondering about what and, and how and where. I'd settle for the truth, just to be able to know you. Because, uh, honestly, I don't mean this in a bad way. You scare me, Cortez. I'm afraid of you. How do you not And you are not the only one, me? mi amiga. I'm sorry, but whatever it is about me that mystifies you, it will have to stay a secret. There are... there are things even you should not know. Gee, thanks. That really helped. Perdóname. Perhaps later, when we are certain of what the future holds, okay? I think I can promise you that, Senorita Ryan. Later. But for now, we must speak of more important matters. You know, why do you why do you guys all have multiple names quit being secret society weird well the thing is if you live for 300 years people get suspicious if you keep using the same name and exist for 300 years what happens now 
The Minstrom told you about the balance, about Stark and Arcadia. A man named Tobias? He was called the Vestrum, I, I think. Vestrum Tobias. Ah, so Tobias made Vestrum give Yang good. I knew he would go far when I first met him years ago. He was just an instrum then, a student of the balance, but he was smart and resourceful. So you know what is going on with the balance. Tobias told me that the... Guardian? That the Guardian was missing and that the balance was failing. He said this would bring chaos into both worlds. As we are already seeing, your dreams, your nightmares, they are part of this. You sense chaos more keenly than most, but even they are beginning to notice that things are not as they should be. Like last night. What about last night? What you saw. You were not alone this time. There were others. And they saw the same thing. Not nightmares anymore. Real. The first sign of the damage chaos can do. The divide is being breached. It is not yet time for the worlds to be united. A breach could prove catastrophical. You helped me back, didn't you? To shift? See? The power is yours, yes? But for now, you need me to focus your powers to call forth your dreams. Dreams? Yes. To travel from one world to the next, you must pass through the world of dreams. It is the only way. You are capable of opening a shift on your own, but you might not be able to. What do you mean? The power. The magic is within you. And when you sleep, sometimes you open the portal without even being aware of it. But when you're awake, it's more difficult. With practice, you will do it. I don't think I want to do it. You must. The worlds depend on it. So what do I do? We must work together, April. I can't do it alone, and neither can you. But what exactly is it that we have to do? Four things. We must find the Lost Guardian, we must locate the gateway to his realm, and the disk that is the key to his tower, and we must do what we can to curtail and defeat the Vanguard. I don't know, I, I'm kind of keen on the idea of, um, of bringing Stark and Arcadia together. Let's make Starcade. Someone get Jeff Edwards on the line. Um, Alright, how do we find the Guardian, I guess? How are we going to find the Guardian? The moment he surrendered his throne and left his realm, he stepped back into our world. This world, Stark. This is where he was born. And so this is where he must return to. But he could be anywhere, right? This city has power, April. Not magic, but the opposite of magic. And it draws people to it like flies to an open fire. All the pieces of the puzzle come together here. You, me, the Vanguard, the Guardian. I can guarantee you that he's here. But where exactly, I do not know. I think maybe the Vanguard do. I think they may have him. If they have him, how are we going to get him back? And why do they need him? Why do we need him? He left his realm, but he's the last guardian. And only he can open the doorway back to his realm to let his successor through. The Vanguard knows this. But what they don't know, yet, is how to get there. How long have I been ma- that wasn't really a pun, that was more of a reference. I guess it kind of was a pun a little bit. But uh, about halfway through what Cortez was talking about. Who'd know about the gateway to the Guardian's realm? That I do not know. That knowledge wouldn't be here in Stark. You must go to Arcadia, study the books, talk with the Minstrom and others who might know, but not yet. First. We must finish our mission here. Listen, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is yummy as hell. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Where is the key to the Guardian's realm? 
In Arcadia, the key contains two parts. One is the disc itself, the other is the four jewels, the eyes of the dragons. That gives the disc the properties of the balance and makes it complete. Five to find four or one, got it. Where is the disc? The disc was left in the care of the Sentinel 10,000 years ago. In the beginning, it was kept in the open, displayed for all to see. But not anymore. Not since thieves tried to make away with it. They will know where it is. Ask Tobias, Vestrom Tobias. Where are the four jewels? Ah, the eyes of the dragons. They are kept by the four dragons themselves. Two in Arcadia and two in Stark. The white dragon has one, as does the old one. These you must find yourself. I'll help you with the others. All right, I'm going to play my blue eyes white dragon. Um, follow that up with dark magician girl. <laughs> How do we defeat the vanguard? The vanguard are strong here and growing stronger. Even in Arcadia, they are gaining a foothold. And with the tyrant on a leash, the future looks quite bleak. How do you know so much about what's going on in Arcadia? Voices whisper in my ear, senorita. Voices that I trust. You're saying the Vanguard are strong here. How come I haven't heard about them? They don't go by that name here. Did you ever hear of the Church of Voltec? Sure. They're... Oh, that's the Vanguard? See. Si. Then they are big, very big. But why do they... Why assume a different name here? In Arcadia, they flaunt their philosophy. They preach the destruction of the balance under the pretense of returning humankind to the glories of the past. Here, they cannot do that. So they have integrated themselves slowly but surely into society under the subterfuge of the New Age religion. And they've built a financial empire to match governments. Well, that's they have right. that much money? The Vanguard own multinational companies. They own planets, April. They own armies. All they need is the balance, and they will own everything. The twin worlds will be at their mercy. So, we basically don't stand a chance, do we, against an enemy like that? If we hold at bay the forces of chaos, and if we ensure the natural continuation of the Guardian's role within the balance, then they will have lost. How are we supposed to fight this chaos you keep talking about? You're the key, April. You have the power to shift, yes? But there's more to you than that. You are a child of the balance. And you... No, that will have to wait. By just being alive, you counter chaos. Without you, last night might have turned out much worse. That tiny breach might have been permanent. I didn't do anything. Then imagine the power you wield when you really do something. Trust me on this, Amiga. It's instinctive to you to fight chaos. You see it so clearly, and you will know what to do. You are most needed in Arcadia, where chaos is a part of reality. The tidal wave will hit there first, and unless it's subdued before it hits Stark full force, we'll never stand a chance. So you will have to travel to Arcadia after we are done here. Okay, so that's it? Kick some vanguard ass, find the Guardian, locate the entrance to his realm, and a 10,000-year-old disc and four dragon eye jewels? And oh, beauty. April, make sure you do battle with the physical manifestations of chaos along the way, because hey, that's your destiny. It's impossible, Cortez. I can't do these things. I'm 18. I'm an artist. No, not even that. I'm nobody. You can't place all these responsibilities on my shoulders. I can't carry that much. I will help you, April. Others, too. You're not alone. Well, I feel very alone, and I can't even tell anybody about this. Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm the Chosen One. Can you help me save the world from evil and chaos? There is no Chosen One, April. There are only those who would and those who wouldn't. You have a choice between the two. 
You said I had powers, that I wasn't like everybody else. True, but you still have a choice. Prophecies can never unravel the will of a single human. You are one of many possible paths, but unfortunately, most of the alternative paths have been blocked by... circumstances beyond our control. The world does depend on you, but you have not been chosen. You choose for yourself what you are, and what you will be. Well, that's, uh... That's kind of interesting, like, obviously it's still going to butt down must us. But, um... It's interesting that we're not literally the one person in the world who can do this. I choose McNuggets. What happens if I choose no, no way? I am not a fortune teller, nor am I a Venar. What will happen? Something else? That's all I can tell you. Something else. But I'm sure it won't be anything good. Not unless you agree to help. But I can't do it. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not your savior. I don't have any magic powers. I'm just this girl. I'm just me. The choice is yours, April. As always, the choice is yours. It's not much of a choice, is it? For what it's worth? Perhaps not. Still, you need to come to the decision on your own. Then the choice will have to be... Yes, let's save the world. Where do we start? Here, in Newport. We must find out about the Vanguard. Their headquarters are in this city, but where? Do they have the Guardian under lock and key? What are their weaknesses? Once we've done that, you must travel to Arcadia. I cannot go there, and besides, I have things to take care of here. Right. Except, where the hell do I go to find out about the Vanguard? The library? The net? Valuable information is hard to find. Remember the painting I showed you yesterday? Sure. The artist. A boy named Warren. I told you about him, yes? Warren is involved in a lot of activities that, um, aren't exactly legal. He has connections. He can point us in the right direction. All right, okay. Where do I find him? My friend, Father Raul, at the Hope Street Cathedral. He's had some contact with the boy lately. Ask him. Wait, did you say Hope Street? Yes. As in the most dangerous neighborhood in Newport? Is it? A Hope Street <laughs> I don't is the usually most follow the civic place. affairs of the city. I remember Hope Street when they first built it. A clean neighborhood. That must have been a very long time ago. Still, I'm sure you'll be safe. You're a girl, no? A self-respecting gentleman would never harm a girl. Yeah, about that. It's the self-respecting gentleman part I'm concerned about. Still, I can handle myself. Father Raoul, was it? At the Hope Street Cathedral? Yes. He will lead you in the right direction. Help you find Warren Hughes. When you're done tomorrow, we will meet up at the cathedral late in the afternoon. I need to speak with Raoul as well. Okay, good. It's a plan then? Enjoy yourself tonight, April. Who knows what the future may hold? Good night. Oh geez, I have completely forgotten about that, Alex, and was hoping to just keep forgetting about that. Hey, buddy. Um... Well, it brought us outside of the subway, so I don't know if we have to, like... Also... It's Brian Westhouse's signature. Cool.
Yeah, I would rather stay at home and read Goosebumps or watch Goosebumps or watch the movie Goosebumps. Anything to do with R.L. Stein, really. I'm, I'm sure that April Ryan would rather go out with R.L. Stein, quite frankly. I don't know, let's just take a look around, I guess. Welcome to Sand Hand Stream Confirm. Mind you, I have no idea where I'm going right now. But, uh, I don't know, maybe we have some inspiration now. I'm way past finger painting. I need a paintbrush and palette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not today. Well, fine. I'll just leave my brush and easel here before I go. About a pig, what about a pig in a sheriff's hat? I have no idea what reference you're making. <laughs> I'm way past finger painting, I know all of my ABCs now. Oh. I don't know, considering where we've just been, I think we might need to go on Beyond Zebra here. Actually, now let's go to the cafe. Hey, Charlie. Watch out, you're gonna hurt Pulling me. long hours today, Charlie? Unfortunately, yeah. Are you staying for the show tonight? What show? You don't know who's playing? I've had a few other things on my mind these past few days, Charlie. Sorry. Anybody good? Anybody good? Are you kidding? Roy and Dale's playing. It's the first gig on their new tour. Sort of returning to their roots before they do the big venues. Tonight? Great, that's perfect. Especially tonight. I need some serious unwinding. Yeah? What's up? I just had the weirdest experience of my life. Weirder than last night? Who told you about last night? Fiona. And I told her about what happened here. What do you mean? What happened here? You don't know? It was another one of those weirdest things ever incidents. But it sounds so much like what happened to you guys. It happened around 11 last night. I was behind the bar, and I couldn't see how it started. But when the music changed... Something, it wasn't human or not like any human I've ever seen, appeared, materialized, from the jukebox. It was playing an instrument. And at first, it didn't seem to notice anyone. Then, when it did, it suddenly disappeared again. I mean, everyone saw it. Everyone. And everyone was just staring at the jukebox. And then at each other. And then things sort of returned to normal again. It was like they all chose to block it out. It was really scary. That sounds like what happened back at the house last night. But Charlie, it could have been... I don't know, mass suggestion, or perhaps gas rapture, even a hologram. Gas rapture? Why what? is that easier to accept than the alternatives? You mean oh. that we're all going Sorry. crazy, or that something really is happening? Like an opening between dimensions and stuff's leaking through. You'd rather believe that? 
I believe there's more things under the sky than science can explain. To me, that's a better explanation. I can accept the mystery. Charlie, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to believe anymore. So what's this thing you were going to tell me about the weirdest experience of your life? You wouldn't believe me anyway, Charlie. Try me. No, really, I can't. It's too much, too close. I don't know if I believe it myself. Okay. You tell me about it later then, all right? Maybe. Uh, hydration and stretch and posture were achieved while uh, that was happening. Um, when does the concert start? In less than an hour. I expect the place to be crowded soon, so you should find yourself a spot to sit down. Is Emma around? Haven't seen her. But she knows about the show, so she'll be here. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. Later. You know what? I think this show is more important than other things. Move faster, Pokey. So where have you been all day? You didn't show up at school, you weren't at work, and then Fiona tells me you're out looking for Cortez again, and on top of that, Zach brags about bagging a date with you. What's up with that? Oh, thanks for reminding me about oh, that. Oh, shit! Zach! I totally forgot. He's gonna kill me. If I don't show up, that is. I mean, I wouldn't you doubt it's it, honestly. true? You have a date with that asshole? I told him he was full of shit. I mean, he I is. needed some information. And you sell yourself to get it? April, you're insane. Well, you're just going to have to disappoint him. I made a promise. To that sleaze bag? That's a promise made to be broken. You're right. I'm staying here. Good girl. Now, there are a couple guys you should keep an eye open for tonight. Me? I have a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend because I have one, and I need somebody what? to compare boyfriends with. It's not there your you choice go. to make, girl. It's just the natural order of things. I thought we were here to listen to the band. Sure, from the back, so we can scope out guys' asses. Uh huh. I don't know which place is weirder, Mercuria or the Fringe Cafe, on any given night. Mark what? Never mind. So, okay, which guys are we looking for? Right. Now, you may want to take notes. Friends and enemies. Oh, Friends God. Enemies. Headache. I didn't really have that much to drink, did I? No. But I did travel through a shift into a parallel universe, which would explain this weird compulsion to curl up into a fetal position and go back to sleep. Not that I'm particularly looking forward to it, but I guess I have to go find that Warren guy Cortez told me about down on Hope Street. And hey, like that's not enough. I have to avoid bumping into Zack today. He's probably royally pissed that I stood him up, and Zack's very good at being pissed. So, I'm going to take a guess and, and uh, say that running into Zack is an instant game over. I mean, it might not be, but it might be, who knows. How many pages do I have, I wonder? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A lot, okay. All right, back I don't need to, to make my bed. It's been too hot to sleep with a cover. Now we're, we're, we're going back to sleep. Has anything made you game over yet? No, uh, that has not happened. I get the feeling like this isn't the sort of game where that is going to happen. I just make remarks sometimes because they're dumb. Hey, 
Anything else interesting in here? No. By the way, I don't think we ever got paid for that first delivery. Like, we got a tip from the captain, but we didn't actually get paid for the delivery itself. The longest journey completely on rails. Yeah, this payment after all and the lists were complete. Well, by the time that we get back to, uh, to, to Marcadia. Oh crap, it's Zach. So you thought you could stand me up and get away with it, bitch? I'm sorry. What did you call me? We have a date and then you don't show? Leave me looking like a sad prick all night in front of my friends? I mean, you'd be a sad prick anyway. I couldn't anyway. go, Zach. Get over it. I don't fucking care. You'll regret fucking with me, bitch. I can promise you that. Mm. What are you gonna do? You'll find out, April Ryan. You're gonna be so fucking sorry you ever fucked with me. Uh huh. Also, he was standing there all night. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. Game. Over. I was kind of I was kind of hoping Fiona would be here because um, and we probably have the grounds to just get Zach kicked out of here at this point. Okay. So now that that's all happened, actually, let's go to the academy. I mean, the, is there like something else that happens if you say like, nah, I really should go with Zach? Or does, does Emma just be like, no, 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 you're staying here if I have to tie you to the, to the couch. Those things you can't actually make it to the date. And... I feel like in order to properly advance the plot, we need to get Zack mad at us anyway. Okay, do you want to actually cooperate with us this time? Not today. Well, when then? I'll just leave my brush and eat. Yes, yes. But thou must not go with that douchebag. Anyway, this was a waste of time. Um, Go back to the cafe. I don't know. I hate to say it, but I don't have time to talk to Charlie right now. Damn. Yeah, 
doesn't look like we have anything in particular to do here. Okay. So, considering that, I think we gotta go to the, um, to the subway. Oh, so they, they subverted the dead man walking thing by making it so that you're dead man walking if you have picked up something. It's been a while since I've seen a playthrough of uh, of Space Quest 4. Alright, Hope Street, I guess. This doesn't seem very hopeful, let me be real here. Looks like he knows how to use that steel pipe. I know someone who knows how to use a steel pipe. She was kind of kick-ass, actually. And I hope to play another game that features her. The boss man. From his uniform, I'd say he's one of the West Side Kings. They got recruitment posters all over town. I think he's in trouble. You think? She's gone. Uh, she's right there. She's clearly not gone. She may not be particularly lucid, but she's physically there. Let's see. Gas or water mains, perhaps. Or, ugh, sewer pipes. That would explain the smell. Oh, let's go to the cathedral. Considering the neighborhood, it's a miracle that it's still intact. Maybe it's bulletproof stained glass designed for inner city cathedrals. I wonder how they light those candles. Do they have ladders? Or jetpacks? That's a funky idea. Priests with rockets on their backs. That would give a whole new dimension to evening services. Okay, so it looks like we have access to the confessionals. I guess that's where we gotta go. Oh good, that we can't just cross through the pews. We have to go around the whole thing. Uh, anything else that I can look at here? Fresco. It's a baby angel. A cherub? He's got a red robe wrapped around his posterior, and he looks to be in a hurry. I can't remember reading about this particular incident in the Bible. Maybe it was in the, um, the sequel? Nah, that came out only five years ago, and this wall painting looks a lot older than that. I'm sorry, what? There's a sequel to the Bible? <laughs> the Bible to Jesus' revenge? <laughs> it's a priest. Good morning. I'm Father Raoul. You're not a Hope Street regular, are you? I haven't seen you here before. I don't visit the neighborhood very often, no. And why should you? It's not a very nice place. This cathedral is all there's left of the hope in Hope Street. I'm sorry to hear that, Father. So am I. But we cope. We cope. How may I be of assistance? Coming soon, the Bible 3, the reckoning. Do people still go to church? Yes, some do. Some do. Religion is pretty resilient. Religion, sure. 
There's so many new religions, and people tend to abandon the old ones, don't they? They'll be back. The Voltex and the Manus of the world offer only a fleeting chance of material happiness. What they cannot offer is spiritual enlightenment. So you're not worried about the competition? We have over 2,000 years of experience and tradition to build on. I don't see us just rolling over on our backs and giving up. No. <laughs> Bible 3 Dragonborn. Bible 2 The Bloodening. Don't forget the Bible DLC. So wait, did, did Bethesda acquire the Bible? Is that what we're going for here? <laughs> the Bible Horse Armored. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Warren Hughes. Do you know a boy named Warren Hughes? As a matter of fact, I do. The Hugheses were regulars before they traveled to the colonies. Poor Warren was left an orphan by his family. I haven't seen him for years. Where does Warren live? I'm not sure he lives anywhere. But he does belong to a Hope Street gang, the Razor Blades, I believe. They seem to conjugate just down the street in Building 87. Be careful, though. Although they're far from the worst gang around here, they're not a particularly friendly lot, and they don't care for strangers. I can take care of myself. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Still, be careful. Yeah, uh, look at me. I got this, uh... Thank you, Father. I got this flute. Please come by again if you're ever in the neighborhood. I got this flute. I got this candy. Including one that's like half melted because it was in my mouth. And I got this toy, Wonky. And also threaten everyone with a pushpin as I've been doing. It's the confessional. It's been more than two years since my last confession, but no. I'm not in a mood to be counting beads right now, and with my list of, um, shortcomings, I'll be counting beads for a very long time. I mean, if you if you need to count a lot of beads really fast, I would suggest just playing, um... Ah. Uh, oh my goodness. Kirby's Epic Yarn. There you go. Lots of beads to collect there. Have you ever told me girls to go to a priest and tell them, You can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. Building 87. I'm just glad that we don't have to worry about RPG battles in the middle of this. Hey, kid. I'm a computer. It's a boy. Looks to be about 15 or so. Why can't I touch him? Nah, he's sweet, but a little too young for me. Yeah, I would hope so. Thank you. Why? Why are we even? Never mind. Can I talk to you for a minute? You know where I can find a kid named Warren Hughes? Who's asking? Um, I am. Warren Hughes. Never heard of him. What's your name? What's yours? April Ryan. Lucky you. <laughs> All right, well, I guess you can't help me. Nope. Nobody can. What do you mean? A nice, pretty girl like you in a neighborhood like this, asking all the wrong questions. You're heading for some serious trouble, you know. I can take care of myself. Mm-hmm. Sure you can. The thing is, there are four guys waiting downstairs for you to come back out, and they can take care of themselves real good. I'm not looking for trouble. Trouble found you, girl. I don't have any money. You think I want your money? Shit, you can keep your damn money. Just because I live in the projects don't mean I'm a thief, you know? I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Of course not. You people never do. What do you want from me? I should have asked you the same question. Except I don't care. You should have thought twice before coming after me. After you? I didn't come... So you're Warren. What? Like you didn't know? No. Cortez told me your name, where to find you, but... Hold on. Cortez? Old Spanish talking dude. 
real crazy in the head? That's a fair description, yeah. Shit. You're not a cop. Social services? You're corporate? No, no, I'm a... a friend of Cortez. He said to look you up. I haven't seen Cortez in a while. Not since before. So what does Senior Cortez want with me? We need some help. What kind of help? Look, I gotta stay incognito most of the time now that corporates and cops are stepping up their search for us. I can't go risking my ass for nobody. Not even Cortez. That's all right. I just need some information on a group called the Vanguard and their leader, Jacob McAllen. Oh, sorry. Never heard of those guys. You wouldn't have. They keep to themselves, and they got some kind of cover operation going, but I don't know what it is, and... You want... need to find out? All right, here's the thing. I got a friend who might be able to help you out. Great! Hold on. Before I use up my favors with him, I need you to do me a favor in return. Probably even help yourself out at the same time. Fair enough. What do I have to do? Easy. Break into the Newport Police Department computer archives. Get me some information on my family. Destroy my criminal record and get the hell out of there. Preferably alive. Easy peasy, sure. You want me to risk my life for a personal favor? If you don't do this for me, I won't help you out. Besides, there's probably some information on the... Uh, Vanguards, was it? In the archives. And that information will be valuable to my friend if he's going to help you out. Well, disrupting the police, that sounds like a good time. I'll do it. Smart decision. So here's the thing. My dad doped out on raps and seduced by commercials. Sold out our whole family to the shiny, happy colonization program for a lifetime supply of the big R, the rapture. He neglected to ask his lovely wife and children, and the corpus didn't care. One day they came to pick up my mom, my sister, and me. I got away, though. Snuck out the window. I spent the next two weeks in a dumpster. And your family? That's just it. I don't know. Off to the colonies, of course, but which one? I don't know. Sometimes they split up families, too. You know, they don't tell you that in their ads. I don't give a shit about my dad, and my mom, she's tough. She can take care of herself, but I want my sister back. We were real tight. I'm not gonna let him use her in the mines and factories out there. So, you want me to find out where they took your sister? That's it. You're catching on. You do that for me, and delete my criminal record at the same time to get them damn corporates off my ass. I'll give you all the help you need. Where's the police station? Take the subway to Metro West. You'll come out on what they call Cop Street. You'll see the NPD headquarters down the block. You can't miss it. I'd better get going. Be cool, eh? This elevator looks like fun. It's out of order. Yeah, it sure I is. I think I'll just take the stairs. <laughs> Coward. Yeah. About those four guys who are outside waiting for me to come out. Hmm. Not sure how true that is. Kid's lying to me. Um, I was not paying attention at all. Uh, let's see. It's a diary. I do recall there was like, oh, conversation log. There we go. It's subway to Metro West. Yeah, you know, come out on what they call Cobb Street. Okay, so we're in the wrong place. Good thing we have unlimited rides. Metro West. Street sign. Is 
It says Threadbare Lane, MCW, and the street ID number is 3018. It says Calavera Crossing, MCW, and the street ID number is 0092. Is that significant, actually? I do all my grocery shopping at T-Rex. Not that their food is particularly good, nor their price is particularly low. I just love their ads. They're tray cool. Especially the one where they built an actual-sized robot dinosaur and sent it out to mangle a competing chain of grocery stores. For real! I don't know if anybody got hurt, but man, that campaign kicked ass! It's your garden variety robotic roadblock. You see them all over this pothole infested town. There's a small control panel on it. The display reads 3018. It's an automated garbage truck. They crisscross the town, emptying containers and running people over. <laughs> running people over. Good. Uh, it's a one week pass, actually, Zero. Where are you going? Like. That's the, the thing, garbage like... container, and it's mostly empty, save for a couple of sticky old newspapers and bottles. They're, like, it's great that you can double-click to run to somewhere, but if you're using an action, that's kind of hard to do. This is so gross. And me in my favorite shirt. Hey, is that a fermin? Ah, oh, no, it's a dead rat. I'm not gonna check out that other mitten in the corner. I think it just moved. How utterly, yeah, utterly friend. pointless is this? And I'm starting to reek a little of oh, crap, too. Is this going anywhere? Apparently not. Good. Okay, so what was it the... It says Calavera Crossing MCW, and the street ID number is 0092. <sighs> Go faster. What if I like control click on something? No? Shift click maybe? Perhaps if I try entering the idea of the intersecting street, the roadblock will move. Later, nerd. I don't know if that was significant, but I don't appear to be able to interact with the roadblock anymore, so probably. Well, April Ryan, you have got to get past yourself. Uh oh. Uh. All right. So apparently, we cannot get run over. We can, however, pass right through this container like it doesn't exist. That, what the? Huh? Okay. News report all of a sudden. This is Lucinda Carlisle reporting live from just outside the Metro Precinct Police Station, and I bring you today a senseless and tragic display of technology gone wrong. In the carnage you see behind me, medical drones are digging through the rubble of a crashed shuttle for the remains of over 100 people who lost their lives today in an accident. 
that could and should have been prevented. Only hours ago, a brave new World Airlines shuttle carrying starry-eyed colonists to the Metro Tower experienced an engine failure and came roaring down on this street without warning, crushing three cars and burying nine innocent pedestrians and two would-be carjackers. April, what are you doing? The cause of this human tragedy? As of yet, there is no official report. We can only speculate, and speculate we will. Was the pilot drunk? Was he hopped up on Amethyn? Is April any of these Was someone aboard things? carrying a bomb? Did the manufacturers of the shuttle, Monster Limited, skimp on a part and import it from a bootleg factory in Germany? The truth could be any or all of the above. But whoever is responsible, and whatever the punishment, it won't bring any of those bloodied, mangled corpses to life. It won't bring Teresa Roseman, mother of three, back to her husband, Marty. That loss is forever, and a huge cash settlement can only ease the pain. It can never remove it altogether. Only expensive brain surgery or personality modification through proprietary drugs can do that. You, you're getting awful the specific exact death here. count is still under wraps, and work will continue throughout the day to identify the thousands of body parts that are being picked one by one from the twisted wreckage of BNWA Shuttle 709. What repercussions will this accident have on our city? Probably none. <laughs> you fly a shuttle, you take your chances. This is Lucinda Carlisle, reporting live for the Metro Channel Action News. Back to you, Lisa and Dan. What is this going to do for are the clear? city? Nothing. How did I do? Fuck you. Uh -huh. And what are the ratings? Five million? That's it? Five million? Jesus, we've lost out to reruns of Gillian's Island? What the fuck, Gregory? Why the hell did you... Did you say Gillian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give me any of that shit. You were the one who said this would broaden my audience. I, I, I should have stuck with the game shows. Jesus! I mean, hey, woman game shows? That's not nothing. You don't get a whole lot of those. Anyway, that's a thing that just happened. It's a high-voltage laser perimeter fence. The color indicates that they're using military-grade lasers. I need brain surgery to fix all my faults? Ah, uh, the only thing here is a cop. Although I guess we're, we're going into, uh... To Copville, USA, here. Which I'm not too keen Newport on. Newport Police Department. It's a holographic sign. The doors are closed. He's cocking that gun. It's a police officer. He's guarding the entrance. Let's see if we can piss him off. Hey! How do I get into the station? That is the question, is it not? Pardon? To get in, or not to get in? That is the question. Good grief, more weirdos. Who? Oh, I'm not a weirdo. I'm an actor. No offense, but isn't that an oxymoron? Lady, you not are the exactly. ghost. She alive. Uh, Are you an actor or a cop? Both, darling. Both. I am an actor, but I will portray an officer of the law in my next motion picture. It's called Mad Cop 2. I play the Mad Cop's friend, the somewhat ticked-off cop. I think I saw the first uh -huh. one. It stunk. I agree. But this one has a certain uh, je ne sais quoi. Flair that the original lacked. You mean more violence, more sex, less plot? That's it. Man, I can't wait to hear the sequelizers cover this one. So you're doing research for your next role? 
Indeed, my fair maiden, I am. I have been assigned to a squad to capture the essence of Her Majesty's honorable service. And what squad would that be? Vice. So, if you're if you're not actually a cop, then uh... why were you parading back and forth like that? I am practicing the fine art of policing. Fine art. It doesn't look like policing. It looks like acting. Bollocks! And I thought I was making progress. Maybe if you tried being a little less... rigid? Yeah, but it's this bloody suit! It makes everyone move the same way. I'm not able to release the character. I mean, you can, also, you can always release the suit. Maybe give it to me so I can sneak into this place? How do I get into the station? You don't. Not today. But I need to get in. What if there's been a crime? Good point. I guess you need to report it via one of the many kiosks installed throughout the city, or by contacting an officer of the law. Like yourself? I am but a humble servant of Her Majesty. And I'm actually assigned to Vice, so don't bother. Uh-huh. Any chance you'll let me through? Shower me with sweet forgiveness, Princess, but unfortunately... I cannot. The doors ain't working. The doors aren't working? They're not! Good lord! I must report this immediately, after I'm done with my policing exercise. Did you say the doors weren't working? Ah, correct. The only things getting in and out of the station today are police officers, prisoners, and garbage. Aren't they all pretty much one and the same thing? Ew. Cutting words from wench's barbed mouth? I mean... What did you call me? As far as the uh, police officers, anyway. That's more like it. How are you able to bring garbage out and prisoners in when the doors are broken? These doors don't work. But the gate downstairs does, of course. You can only get through that inside of a vehicle. The security measures are quite extreme. Like how extreme? Can you say radiation poisoning? Radiation poisoning? Uh, I don't see the point though. Um, and then we just get the same thing. How are you thing. able to bring guards? These doors? Like can you say? Thanks, and good right. luck. Uh, parting is such sweet sorrow. Farewell, princess. Till we meet again, farewell. Alright, so we learned that the doors apparently aren't working. So we need to find another way in there. Which I, I guess that trying to get in through the front uh, entrance is probably never the way. If I'm not completely mistaken, and if I remember my tech classes correctly, that's an anti-gravity control unit. It looks fully intact. I can't pass through the fence without setting off the alarm, or worse, getting fried by that military-grade laser. Hmm. Move along. There is nothing to see here. Except for the escaped convict right behind you. I'm on special duty today, ma'am. So that escaped convict will have to take care of himself. After all, Food guard this perimeter in my absence. Damn. Uh, me? I'll be good. That was a rhetorical question, ma'am. You are not qualified. Now, move along. Nothing to see here. Except for that crashed hovercraft. Nah. You see those everywhere these days. Sorry? Dime a dozen. Crashed hovercraft are a dime a dozen? Fifteen a week, ma'am, at the very least, in this city alone. But they say it's the safest mode of transportation available. Statistically, yes, unless you're aboard one of the buggers. 
then your chance of survival drops drastically. What? They're the safest mode of transportation, if you stay on the ground. The chances of being hit by one going down are relatively low. Thanks for ruining my trust in modern technology. We're here to protect and serve. Uh-huh. Isn't it the other way around? Just keep it moving, ma'am. Nothing to see here. Except for you, officer. Oh, jeez. Hey. Me? I always did love a man in a uniform. Sorry, ma'am, but I'm gay. Now, move along. Uh, Nothing to uh, see here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Except... I won't tell you again, so move along. There is absolutely nothing to see here. Nothing. Jeez, don't you people have anything better to do? <coughs> Are you feeling all right, officer? Thank you, ma'am. I'm fine. All the dust from the debris is just choking me up. <coughs> do, you, do you need a lozenge? No? How about this slightly used one? Oxygen plant? No? Okay. Well, good talk. I can't pass through the fence without setting off the alarm. Or worse, getting fried by that military-grade laser. Uh, let's see. So chances are this guy was voiced by uh, John Henry Cox. Um, he was in five episodes of House of Cards as William Erickson. Uh, he was in uh, an episode of Person of Interest. Oh, okay. I thought for a second it said you don't know Jack here, but it's the movie You Don't Know Jack from 2010. And not anything to do with Jackbox. Yeah, I don't really recognize any of this stuff. Anyway, um, can I just use the flute? Toot toot. <laughs> Are you okay, April? What's happening? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> okay, you can stop that now. <laughs> just happened? <laughs> Where am I? Uh, we do the monkey? We need that control unit, that's for damn sure. Because how do we, how do we deal with this, with those laser fence? Use the monkey on the laser fence? No? Ring. Um. Okay. We can we make a a shift now. Hmm. I'm not really sure. And I was just back to the subway. 
another unfortunate victim of the Anglo-Pacific Wars of the 90s. I'm gonna guess that this is not gonna result in anything good. We pretty much had the interaction with this with this container. Hello. Oh. Aha. The trash in now I that get. That was so gross. The things I do to save the world. I mean that smell, that sticky stuff, the way that rat just wouldn't let go. Disgusting. This can't be Not your to friend. mention the fact that I really, truly stink. I don't think this is ever coming off. I'm gonna stink like fish heads and moldy pizza for the rest of my sorry life. I'm sure it's fine. It's a toolbox. There's a sheet of paper in here. Yes, thank you. It's some kind of requisition form or work order. <laughs> Bokama Mercer Corporate Labor Union, form number 09042. Short-term tactical suspension of union members' benefits. It's a carbon copy of an old work order. Okay. <laughs> this phone, zero nine nine one two zero nine zero. I was gonna say like, Gus. Who's Gus? You can usually tell a crook by his eyes and his foul behavior. <laughs> I mean, you'd be surprised. Tuvok? What? Was that a Star Wars Voyager reference? Oh uh, yeah, he he does look vaguely like Tuvok, doesn't he? <laughs> Tuvok? From my What's extensive knowledge of car shows, I'd say she's probably the desk sergeant on duty. For some reason, they're always slightly overweight and grumpy. I mean, consider where consider where he's working. Of course he's going to be grumpy. <laughs> His life is hell. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. what can I do for you? Her life is hell. My apologies. Where are the archives? The Archives? You're not an officer of the law, are you? Um, I'm... I'm, uh, uh, an acolyte of order. That's kind of like an officer of the law. I'm in training at the Academy, and I need to get into the Archives to... study. <laughs> You're in training? Uh-huh, sure you are. <laughs> Then what the hell you doing here? You should be at the academy doing push-ups and learning how to bullshit like a pro. <laughs> About the archives. You're not an officer of... Yes, <laughs> yes I am. If you're a cop, where the hell's your uniform? Your badge? Your standard issue disruptor pistol? At home. They're all at home. Off then duty. I suggest you get your cute little butt home and get your badge, your uniform, and your gun. Capiche? Now shoo, leave the grown-ups to do the grown-up work, okay? Hey, at least I have a cute butt. About the arc- You're not- So what if I'm not? Then you can't go into the back, capiche? Cops only. Besides, half the doors in this building, including that one, are out of order. Nobody's going in, nobody's coming out. And until those overpaid, underworking service guys get off their butts and back to work, that's the way it's gonna stay. Thanks anyway. <laughs> Catfish. Yes, I... I know that reference. Left vid phone. None pizza, left vid phone. It's an old vid phone. Ancient, ancient technology. Visuals are so passe.
busy. What a surprise. I'm guessing that was the number that was on the, uh, the work order. Bokama Mercer Corporate Labor Union. I should give her a ring. Oops. Hello. Hi, Mom. <gasps> it's April. How are you? Where are you, sweetheart? In the city, Mom. You know that. Why didn't you call? We've been... I've been worried sick about you, sweetheart. Didn't you get my letter? Yes, and I can't say I understand why. Well, that was the problem, wasn't it? You didn't understand. I don't think it was fair of you to be so hard on your father. You hurt him a lot, you know? And I'm not just talking about you pushing him down the stairs. <coughs> what? And what about me? You don't think he hurt me? Were you so blind you didn't see that? April, you know I can't take sides in this. No. Of course not. Not you. Not ever. Anyway, how is... Is Dad doing okay? I mean, after the fall. He broke his arm, and he had to take some time off work. Money short because of that. We had to pull Danny out of school until next semester. You can't blame me for those things, Mom. If you hadn't left like you did... I'd probably be dead now, Mom. I couldn't take it anymore. Please, let's not argue about this now. I just wanted to... I just wanted to hear your voice. Please come home, April. We still love you. No. Thank you, but no. That's not gonna happen. Listen, I have to go. I'm in the middle of... something. Take care, okay? Okay, sweetheart. I love you. Yeah, me too, Mom. Bye. Why was this an interaction exactly? I don't know. Let's try dialing the other number again. Busy. What a surprise. Try the other phone. Just my incoming call. Wait, so we're just calling this? What? Why? It's a um, portly fellow wearing red coveralls. I think he's a repairman. It's a thin guy wearing red coveralls. He looks like a repairman. Hiya! <laughs> huh? You an angel from heaven come to take me away? No point talking to old Georgie there. Ever since he overdosed on raptures, he ain't been right in the head. I don't ever let him hold the hammer no more either, I'll tell you that. Why are you? What do you want? We're on our lunch break, honey. <laughs> Excuse me, how do I smell? Smell? Are you coming on to me, honey? What? <laughs> I don't know. Women don't usually come on to me, so I'm I'm just checking. I wouldn't want to miss a come on. I asked you how I smelled. Yeah, right. Um like uh moldy pizza and um is that salmon? Smoked. Yeah. And a faint touch of rum. I had an accident with a bottle inside a garbage container. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. You're not alone. In fact, there are meetings downtown every Wednesday night. Uh-huh. I don't have a drinking problem. If you can't admit it to yourself, honey, you do. After all, who's the one reeking a rum? Not me, that's for sure. <laughs> not today, anyway. Why are you guys working? 
We're on a contractually bound lunch break. Uh huh. Right. But you're not eating. We're done eating, sure. But we're still on our break. Clause 16 of the contract, and I quote, improper digestion may prove detrimental to further work-related activities. <laughs> end quote. Meaning what? We're letting the corned beef settle, honey. Aren't you supposed to fix the doors? That's right. But instead, you're just... sitting here. That's right. And you're not planning on getting back to work anytime soon? That's right. And you're not bothered by this? That's right. I could say anything, anything at all. That's right. And you just answer... That's right. Well, how's that for productivity? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It'd be so nice if you could fix the doors. And it would be so nice if you could go away and leave us alone. Enjoy your lunch break, guys. With the Sunday overtime we're getting, you betcha, honey. Well, goodness knows. They're gonna have some time to be left alone. Um... You know what, let's, let's get off of this screen. Um, how do we go back to the tile screen? Can I go back to the tile screen? Can I go back to the tile screen from here? No? Okay, well, let's, let's make it so that it's at least not coughing in the background, as we call it for today. So, um, thank you all for coming by. Thank you to uh, Alex, Zero, Jewel, Foose, and Mazzy for hanging out in chat. The next scheduled stream is going to be on Sunday at uh, 8 p.m. or later Atlantic Daylight Time. It is the Sunday Super Shuffle where we're going to do some Archipelago shenanigans for real this time. Maybe we'll have the new version of Archipelago. Who knows? The, it, the Archipelago release cycle is honestly as randomized as the actual engine itself. And that takes us around the week, around the wheel, to our next long run stream next uh, Tuesday at 9 p.m. Atlantic Daylight Time, where we shall uh, attempt to get uh, farther into this police station and see what chaos we can reap therein. Uh, so yeah, that's going to do it. Thank y'all for watching. I'm Coolio if you don't know, and I'll see you guys next time.